Okay. Well, I'm glad to see that you guys showed up. I've been, I've been, I've been practicing, and we'll practice a little more here. You know. Yeah, Ruth, she's uh having having a hard time keeping her blood pressure down. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to change some things there. No. No time for fishing. Too cold for fishing right now. Oh, here comes one. Here comes Miss Jennifer. All right. Okay. So this week and next week will probably be the finish of Revelation. Okay. So we can wind this up. We're gonna. We're starting to come into actually. Kind of hate to say it. The best part. Yes. The worst part. The worst part is over at this point, okay? So turn your Bibles over to chapter 18, Revelation chapter 18. And in chapter 18, it talks about Babylon. Now, Babylon is an actual place. It exists now. Back years ago, Saddam Hussein was going into Babylon and rebuilding Babylon. And the Antichrist is going to put his headquarters in the city of Babylon. But Babylon is going to be destroyed. God is going to totally destroy this, destroy this town. So let me read uh, the, I think, the first three verses of chapter 18. And after these things, I saw an angel come down from heaven. Okay, this, this angel is coming down. This is just before the second coming of Christ. Having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mighty with a strong voice, saying, But Babylon the great is fallen. And is becoming an habitation of devils, foul spirits, unclean, hateful birds. For all nations have drunk the wine and the wrath of the fornication of the kings of the earth and committed fornications with, <clears throat> with. and the merchants of the earth waxed rich through their abundance. Look. During this period, during the Revelation period, there are going to be a lot of people that are on the side of Satan that are going to become very wealthy. And they're going to be here in Babylon. But in one hour, all these, all these people are going to lose their money. Wow. So, I wonder how that's going to happen. Let's go. Look. God's wrath can be very devastating. Yeah. I mean, it, it's you do not want to go against the good Lord. Let's put it. Let's just put it that way, okay? And a lot of these people today think that having rich and wealth is going to get them to heaven, and that's not the way it works. It has never worked that way. So. That's basically the short story on Babylon and the fall of Babylon. So let's turn over to chapter 19 where at this point in the, in the book of Revelations, they're praising God. This has taken place, this has taken place just before God is going to come back to earth, okay? And they're all they're all praising God. Not only that, you're gonna have let me get my book so it don't fall. You're gonna have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Who knows about the marriage supper of the Lamb? Anybody? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> 
Okay. As of right now, the church, the relationship between the church and Christ is, is like being engaged. Okay? So we're in the engagement period. just like before you get married, you date, you find out if this is the right person to have, right. you know, that you really want to be married to. So this is the stage that we're in right now. So at the marriage supper of the Lamb, that's when God and the church is married together. All right? Uh, you can read about some of this in 2 Corinthians, all right? Let's see, what else do we have here? At the marriage supper of the Lamb, and also there's, there's two things that are going to happen also. You're going to have the Bema seat, which is a judgment, and the white throne of judgment. Okay? One is, one is for the Christians, and one is for non-Christians. Now, at the Bema seat, we're all going to be judged. All the Christians are going to be judged. That's where we're going to receive our rewards. Amen. All right? And God is going to tell you about the good things and the bad things that you've done. But believe it or not, even, even the person that has just been saved is still going to receive. Everybody's going to receive a reward. No one's going to be left out. It's just that during... You okay there, Judy? <laughs> I done, yeah, well, I've done that a lot. During, during this period of time, you're going to receive those crowns. And that's why, you know, leading a Christian life, doing the right things, it's just like reading this book. You're going to receive a reward for us talking about this, Amen. okay? Unfortunately, today, and I've said this probably too many times, but there's a lot of churches that, that don't, won't even, won't even read this book, okay? Yeah. I really like the first, I like the Genesis, and I like Revelation. Everything else in the middle is indoctrination to lead us in the right direction. Okay? So, at the marriage supper of the Lamb, that's when Christ is going to take the church in and be married to the church forever and ever. This is not going to go away. Okay? So, that leads up to the second coming. So the second coming, all this has taken place in heaven during the seven years of the tribulation, all right? Now God is ready to come back, okay, in the second coming. So let me read some of that. And I saw the heaven open. Remember, John is seeing this, okay? Okay, can you tell me where you are? I'm, at, I'm on chapter 19, verse 11. Okay, okay good. And I saw the heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Everybody wants to know, well, is there going to be animals in heaven? Well, evidently, we're all on white horses. Now, I don't know if your pet's going to be there, but we're all going to have a horse. So, so if you, maybe you ought to read up on how to take care of your animals, okay? Behold a white horse, and he, he who sat on the white horse was called faithful and true. Okay, this is the description of Jesus Christ, all right? And in the righteousness, he does judge and make war. Look, at this point, God is coming back to take back this world, all right? At this point, okay? His eyes were as as flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. There's where these crowns come in again. We're all going to get these crowns and rewards, alright? And he had the name written on him that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called World of God. 
And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon the white horses. So there you go. We're all going to have our horses. We're all going to be following him. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Fine linen has been mentioned a number of times. That's purity and clean, meaning purity and clean, okay? So, at this point, the door is opened up. We're all getting ready to come back to do what? We're going to come back to Armageddon. So how many times in the Bible is the word Armageddon mentioned? It's one time. That's right. Only one time. Now, Armageddon is a real place. Okay? The Armageddon is actually in Israel. I believe it is in the valley of Megiddo. Is where Armageddon actually is. Now that valley, according to some people, is one of the best places in the world to fight a war. All right? And what's the name of it again? Megiddo. Don't ask me how to spell it. <laughs> I can look at I'll have Siri do it for me. I'll just have to sound it out. So God is coming back now. God's coming back now. At this point, is going to come back and take over. Just take care. Of it. Going to take everything back from Satan. Okay. And so he's going to. We're going to fight this war. Well, sort of, kind of. <laughs> okay. So, in this valley. From right here at the beginning of Israel, up here at Syria, is 185 miles. Top to bottom, yeah. From top to bottom, yeah, maybe around 185 miles, okay? So this battle is going to start and be all the way up and down here. So at this point, when the battle starts, all these, all these nations, all the nations of the world are going to come to this fight, including the United States. Okay? Because once, the only thing that's keeping things back right now from really going to pieces is the Christians, is the church, God's church. Okay? Once that church comes out, Satan's got total control. Up until this point, Satan does not have total control because of us Christians. Okay, when I say Christians, I really mean people that have accepted Christ as their Savior. I mean, you can say that you're a Christian and still not be saved. Okay, so you have to kind of be careful how you use the word Christian. So at this point, God's going to come back with us now. This, this war is not going to, all the nations are here, gathered. Every nation in the world is gathered in this valley, all right? So, how is this war fought? Is it a regular war? How is God going to fight this war? I think we have more God, God huh? With the word. That's right. This battle is probably not going to last very long because God's going to speak the word and he's going to kill every one of them. And the blood is going to be as deep as a horse's bridle. It's a lot That's a lot of blood. And it's going to take, I think I read somewhere where it would take six or seven years for them to just clean this up. Yeah. Okay? Isn't that the burning of the, the weapons? They got to burn all the weapons. They're going to, well, it's, it's, tells you that they're going to take some of the weapons and turn them into plowshares. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's going to take a while, but everybody thinks that this is going to be a physical battle between God and Satan. But Satan's on the losing end of this deal. Because God speaks the word, and it tells you, it tells you right here what happens if you, you know, 
in these verses that happens. I, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that if no one else would read any other book other than this book at the end, would cha it should change your mind yeah. on whether you would be a Christian or non-Christian. Yeah, you know, if you really, if you really believe. So at that point, after the battle is over, then what's going to happen to Satan? So if you go to, go to chapter 20, and let's see what happens to Satan. Because Satan has to be dealt with. This whole thing, the whole earth has to be cleaned up. So we've got to get rid of Satan. God's got to get rid of Satan to do this. All right? So in chapter 20, verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain. I don't know how big this chain is, but it must be awful big. All right? A great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which was the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and sealed upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. That's the whole problem that we have right now. And you see all these people out here demonstrating against Israel and all the crazy things that they're doing. That is a deception from Satan. That's the only way that I can explain this. And pure stupidity. <laughs> okay? Cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and seal upon him that he deceived the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed for a season. Okay. During this millennium, we're going to be ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ for a thousand years. Now, there are people that are going to be alive or will be alive that survive the tribulation. Now, the purpose of those people are that during this thousand years of rule and reign that we're going to do with Jesus Christ, they're going to repopulate the earth. Okay? But during that thousand years, we're going to have control over everything. Christ is going to be the judge, jury, and executioner at this point. Which is not going to affect us. All the people that have accepted Christ as their Savior, this is not going to have a thing to do with. We're talking about only the people that survive the tribulations. Now, after that thousand years, this is when Satan, that's what it's talking about, Satan is going to be loosed again for a short period of time. Now, some of those people are actually going to be deceived again. Yeah. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. You know, you would think after a thousand years of seeing what Christ has done, that all these people would say, yes, that's the right way to go. But it's not. They're going to be, he, going to turn Satan loose, and they're all going to be deceived again. So, I mean, it, it's kind of, kind of unbelievable that you could go a thousand years and see what's happened yeah. and then be deceived again. But that's the power of Satan. Yeah. Well, okay? Kids too. Huh? They're, they're kids because they can... The ones... Right. Those people are going to repopulate this earth. So they're, they're going to have children and it doesn't matter. They're, gonna, they're just going to be deceived. And uh, Yeah. Yeah, I see like even today, people are so deceived. They have God's creation. They have people preaching the yeah. gospel. And you go to them, you share with them the, the good news, and they still reject it. So, yeah, it's hard to believe that they'll be there, but they also do it here now. And they see all, I mean, even the, all this going on in Israel right now, if you think about it, the whole world is focused on one little chunk of dirt because God said it would be that way. Anybody with a brain 
and you know a little bit of nonsense could figure out that yeah. God is right, Israel is His chosen people, salvation is real, and Jesus Christ is the Messiah. But they reject it, and they're and they're storming streets and they're protesting against God. And so I guess if we can see it right now, we can see it then as well. Yeah, because the the it's. There are some things that we're just not going to know about, okay? That we won't know until we get to heaven, period. I mean, there, there may be questions that you have. I may not have the answer to or the pastor may not have the answer to either. It, it's, it's just going to be that way. It's some things that God maybe just doesn't want us to know until the time is right, okay? So, after Satan is bound for a thousand years... Then they're going to come the great white throne. We've already had the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Christians have gone to the Bema seat. They've been judged on their, their works and their good deeds. After and, salvation. Yeah. And, huh? After salvation. Yeah. And awarded their crown. So now God is going to judge those who are not Christians, okay, at this, at this point in the Bible. So, well, I can, I can read this. Let me read, uh, go to chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face on earth and into heaven fled away, and there found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Right here is where they're going to be judged. All right? This would be what you call the second resurrection. All right? And if you want, to, you want some references, you can go to uh, Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Thessalonians 4 through 18, I mean 13 through 18. All right? What was the and, chapter? Okay. First it's a... Uh, 15. 15. Right. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and then Thess 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And the books were opened. Okay. We're talking about the books. You got two books, two books, one for the saved and one for the unsaved, okay? Now, which book do you want to be in? The saved. You want to be in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. That's the book that you want your name in, all right? Mm -hmm. You do not want to be in this book that we're going to talk about here for just a minute or two. And I saw the dead shall, the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and other books were opened with these books of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Look, everything that we're doing is being documented. <laughs> so, you kind of need to be careful what you're doing. Because God's got his eyes on all of us. God's got his eyes on this church today. Or what we're doing here. And thankfully, I believe that we're going in the right direction. You know? All right. Let's see. Let me go back to, to verse 12. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. Look, can't get to heaven no works. It's telling you right here. And the sea gave up her dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. So everybody's going to be judged. Even the people in hell are going to be judged again. And sent back to hell. All right? At this point. 
And they were judged every man according to his works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So you died once. You're going to be judged again. And you'll be cast back into hell forever. The lake of fire. The, the lake, well, yeah. Lake of fire. It says lake of fire, yeah. Right. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You're right, Charlie. So that's that's basically what's going to happen there. So if you go back to compare Genesis to Revelation which is Genesis the first book of the Bible and Revelation is the last. Mm -hmm. So if you compare Paradise Lost, okay, what happened in Genesis? When they took, when they ate the fruit or took the knowledge from the tree, they were, their eyes were open and sin was able to come in or Satan was able to come in and they were cast out of the garden. Yeah. Over here in Revelation, all this is going to be restored. All sin and pain, all that's going to be restored. Over here in Genesis, man is barred from the tree of life. Okay? From that tree. But over here in Revelation, mankind is restored to the tree of life. Hey, Tomas, I'll get into that a little bit later about this, about this tree of life. This, there's going to be 12 trees in heaven or in paradise, okay? Death and pain. That's where death and pain started. It was over here in Genesis after they took the fruit of the tree of life. Over here in Revelation, that's all going to go away. All this is going to go away. Satan is active over here in Genesis. But over here, what, what, just, what did we just talk about? Satan is going to be chained. And eventually chained forever. Thrown in the, in the lake of fire. A great big huge chain. That's going to be, yeah, that's right. That's right. So any questions up to here? Roses won't have thorns. Yeah. Roses has thorns. Roses. That's right. So. The earth too is going on. Let's. Uh, I've got two more chapters here. I think I want to kind of save these two chapters till next week. So if you want to read chapter twenty-one and twenty-two. For next week, uh, we'll save those, and that'll be the last that we do in Revelation. And actually, this is actually 21 and 22 is actually the best part. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll save we'll save the best part for last for next week, and then after that, it'll be Thanksgiving, and we'll start up something else. Sure. Being that they're opening books and all that stuff for for the unsaved, and um, and then they're judged by their works. Uh, is there an increment of uh, different types of punishment? In there the is. Satan? There and, is and different increment increments of punishment. Not not only the punishment part, but for these crimes that I tell you for doing certain things, there are different. That's for the, the saved. I was talking about the unsaved. The, uns, the unsaved too, both. Both the saved and the unsaved. There's going to be a hierarchy, okay, right. in, in the saved portion, okay? So the more crowns that you can build up means that you will have a higher authority or position in the new world, okay? Remember, 
What's, go, what's going to happen to the old earth? The old earth is going to be completely burned up. And we'll talk about the new Jerusalem next week and what, what that contains also. Like I said, I like that part. The book of life, I always wondered why they brought the book of life into this when they were all on Satan. Well. Because there, would, would there be some that say, oh, wait a minute, here's a guy that's in the book of life, you know? <laughs> Everything that's happening is documented in these books, okay? Yeah. Doesn't matter what, they're, those two books, the Lamb's Book of Life and the other book, okay? Everything that's happening on this planet today is documented. So when you're judged and you go up in front of God and say, oh, I didn't do that, it's all written down. They are, Christ already, God and Christ already know, you know? If you sneeze the wrong way, it's maybe in there. <laughs> I'm just using that as an expression, you know. But I mean, so it's all documented. This is this. There's look. There's going to be no mistakes here. No mistakes. God has everything under control. Amen. I mean, that's that's kind of the bottom line of. The whole thing is God's in control. God's been in control all the time. It's just that Satan's been, he's let Satan loose to give people like us a choice of whether choosing Satan's way or choosing his way. Now, it took me a while to choose his way, but I finally did. And I'm glad I did. Any more questions? Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the time that we have together. We just pray, Lord, that you'll be with us, the leaders of this country, Lord, that they will open their eyes, turn to you, and lead this nation in the right direction. We pray, Lord, for the pastor as he gives us a sermon today, that the people will open their hearts and minds, Lord, and accept you as their Christ and their Savior and the forgiveness of their sins, Lord. We just ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.